myself rajeshwari arpi working as an assistant professor in the department of csc rbnc balari i uh, would like to present the module 4 uh, from the subject digital and computer uh, organization uh, i will be dealing now with the module 4 uh, module 4 in the module 4 we would like to uh, the topics i would like to discuss are input output organization uh, accessing the in this uh, under the topic input output organization we have to study the concept of how to access the different io devices uh, then the concept of interrupts followed by the interrupt hardware um, and how to enable or disable the interrupts and uh, handling the multiple io devices so uh, next part we are having the direct memory access and uh, how the bus arbitration process can be adopted uh, uh, and the different uh, types of uh, memory hierarchy we need to study and also concentrate on the cache memories and its related mapping functions so this is the brief overview of the contents of module 4 so uh, the previously as i had mentioned in module 3 the uh, same reference textbook call uh, hemicho fifth edition you need to use for this particular module also right so now we shall get into the first uh, topic of the module 4 so that is accessing the io device so how the io devices so usually io devices uh, when we speak of the word io devices what comes into your mind is the process, how the uh, keyboard and the display device that is a monitor is connected to the processor and how it is able to um, act, uh, how it is able to handle the information how the exchange of data takes place between the processor the memory the input output devices right so that concept we are now going to study in detail so a simple arrangement of how to connect to different io devices uh, as we can see in this particular figure it is a single bus structure because there is a, this particular bus as we have seen in the previous module 3 uh, bus is a set of interconnecting wires which is used to carry the information from one unit to the another unit so you can see the processor the memory the io device the n number of io devices are all set to be interconnected using the bus system bus right so a simple arrangement for connecting the different io devices is to use a single bus structure uh, which enables all the devices connected to it to exchange the information right it consists of three set of lines to distinguish the type of data that is being the type of information that is being transmitted over the uh, bus okay so those are called as the address uh, uh, information data information and the control uh, information are in the form of a control signals okay so address uh, information is nothing but the device address the address of a memory location or a io address is said to be sent over the address bus so this bus especially or these address lines are especially designated to carry uh, the addressing information so similarly when the processor wants to send the data to uh, any of the uh, device or the memory wants to send the device uh, Uh, the uh, data to the other functional units so then uh, the information is carried by a what we call as the data lines and the control signals which are the read write sig signals or uh, any uh, controlling signals which are needed for coordinating the activities of the uh, instruction execution are all uh, sent via what we call the control lines okay so therefore the three set of different lines are used to carry different forms of information over the bus that is the address lines the data lines and the control lines and uh, next point is that every device so a processor because as we have seen uh, there are n number of devices connected to it so how does the processor identify which uh, when it wants to communicate with uh, any of the device so how will it communicate so the processor will communicate using the device address so every device is assigned a unique 
address, right? So every device is identified by unique address. So this address information is used as a communication mode between the processor and the I.O. device, right? So to continue, to access an I.O. device, the processor plays the address on the address slides. Then the designated device recognizes this address because each device is uh, assigned a unique address. When the processor sends the address over the address bus, uh, the, pro the I.O. device will be able to recognize the address and responds to the control signals because as when the uh, processor wants to communicate with the I.O. device, it puts the address, uh, uh, address of the device as well as it will uh, uh, send a control signal, a read control signal uh, over the input, uh, over the control lines, okay. So when these signals arrive to the respected, uh, when the control signals and the address information over the address and the control lines respectively appear uh, to the device, when it when the device receives that particular uh, 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 when the device is able to receive this particular information the device the designated device will try to respond to the request placed by the processor right so the device recognizes the address and responds to the control signal the processor requests either a read or a write operation and the requested data is transmitted over the data lines Okay, it is and the requested data are transferred over the data lines. So this is the process of how the information exchange takes place between the different um, devices uh, in the computer system. Okay, so when the devices and the memory shared, so now we are having uh, the two forms of accessing the I.O. device. What are the various types of accessing the I.O. device? There are two important uh, ways of accessing the I.O. device. One is called as the memory mapped I.O. So what, what is this uh, memory mapped I.O.? So when the device, when you are having the I.O. device and the memory, both of them are sharing a common address space. So we call the same address space the arrangement is called as the memory address, uh, memory mapped I.O. So this, uh, I repeat, so the devices and the memory share the same address space. This arrangement is called as the memory uh, mapped I.O. Because both of them are I.O. Uh, address space is mapped to the memory I.O. space. So the uh, memory space, so therefore it is called as the memory mapped I.O. Okay. So any machine instructions uh, here, um, the simple machine instructions like a move instruction or a load and store instruction can be used to transfer the data to and from the I.O. device, right? I repeat, so this any machine instruction that can access the memory can also be accessed to operate on the I.O. device. So that is example. So this data in comma are not okay. So we are having the data in. It is a memory. It is the particular location okay, which corresponds to the device. So the content from this is being stored into the. It is being transferred into the register are not. And similarly, the second instruction, the data from are not because it is an output variable. So the data that is there in the register or not will be moved into this particular data out register, data out memory. Uh, it is this. It is associated with the. Uh, it is associated with the device. Okay, I repeat. So here, what happens? Move data in, comma or not. So data in represents the device. Okay. So the content from this, this is associated with the device. This memory location is associated with the device. The contents of this are transmitted, are transferred into the register or not. So here, this is associated with the output device. The content from this will be stored in this particular um, data out. Uh, data out okay so next when IO devices and the memory are having different address space so 
here this is one form of accessing the IO device, one method of accessing. So coming to the second method, it is called as the IO mapped IO or what we call it as a standard IO. So when the IO device, so previously we have seen that IO device and the memory, both of them are going to share the same address space. Whereas in the second method, so the IO devices and the memory, both of them are having a different address space. And this arrangement is called as the IO mapped IO. Okay. So here we cannot use the load store instruction or the uh, move instruction. So a special set of instructions are needed in order to handle the IO devices. So that is uh, special in and out. We require the in instruction and the out instruction to perform the IO operations or the IO transfers. Okay. So the IO devices may have to deal with a fewer number of address. Okay. So address lines. I repeat. So what is this IO mapped IO? Here the memory and the IO devices are allotted a separate address space. So therefore, we cannot use the particular uh, uh, move instruction or a load and store instruction. So separate uh, instructions called as the in and out instructions needed to be considered for handling the IO device. So this is the frequently asked difference in the exam. So what is the difference between the memory mapped IO, uh, memory mapped versus IO mapped? Right, so here are the comparison features and the memory map versus the IO mapped devices. Okay, so in this, certain features are said to be compared between uh, in terms of certain parameters called as the addressing, in terms of size, in terms of instructions, in terms of design complexity, and in terms of registers communicating. Okay. So, uh, the IO in terms of first, we shall look at the difference in the memory map. First point here, the IO devices are accessed like any other memory location. So, we need not uh, uh, use any uh, designated uh, instruction set here to access the IO devices. As we have seen, just like a simple move instruction or a load and store instruction can be used to access the IO device. If IO devices and the, the memory, uh, both of them are going to share a common address space. Okay. So, where here coming to the IO mapped, so here the IO devices, uh, IO devices in the sense input output devices cannot be accessed like any, uh, like any other memory location because the address space is different. You cannot use the uh, same instructions like move and load and store. So instead we have to use the in and out instructions. So address size will be 16 bit address values here whereas here it, it is 8 bit address values. So the instructions as I have already uh, specified here we can use a move or a load and store instruction whereas in the IO mapped IO in and out uh, instructions have to uh, be used exclusively for handling IO mapped IO. And comparing the design complexity, so this uh, memory map IO because both of them same address space, so we can uh, tell that it is simple to design and implement. So whereas IO map IO is said to be complex and to implement and design. So next, communicating registers. Any register can communicate with the IO device, and only accumulator can communicate with. So here any register can communicate with the IO device whereas here only the accumulator can communicate with the IO device. So in the case of IO mapped IO. Okay. So apart from this uh, memory, what are the memory cycles required? So what are the cycles of operation required here? Memory read and out operations are required and here IO read and out uh, operations are read and write operations are required. Okay, so these are certain comparison features where we can compare the memory mapped uh, IO with that of the IO mapped IO. So next, how do we access the IO device? So IO devices, that is the input output devices, um, can be accessed. Uh, there is an interface present for uh, input device. So there is an interface that exists between 
uh, the input device and the processor and the memory. So what is that interface? So this is the input device. So this is the IMO. This is the block what we have seen. So this is our uh, IMO interface, right? So which is connected to the processor and the memory unit via the bus. You can see the system bus can't. It has been uh, separate lines are indicated to carry the address information via the address lines. Data carried via the data lines and control information that is carried to the control lines, right. So now we shall see what is the content of the IO interface. So you know that IO interface contains the address decoder, control circuits, data and the status registers. Now we shall see what is the significance of each of these. Okay, so figure 4.2 illustrates the hardware required to connect an IO device to the bus. Right, so that is we call it as an I.O. interface. So the I.O. device is connected to the bus using an I.O. interface circuit which is having the following components. So that is the address decoder, control circuit, data on the status, register as we have seen. So what is the role played by each of these components in the I.O. Uh, interface? So this particular address decoder, this device recognizes its address. Okay, recognizes um, uh, this particular address decoder. What does it, that address decoder try to do? It will try to uh, recognize the address that is put up in the on the address line. So here you can see the address decoder. Whenever the uh, address information comes over the address lines, so that information is given for the decoder to decode the address. When once the address uh, is being decoded, the it will try to enable that uh, respective device whose address is being matched. Okay, so I told you there are a number of devices, and each uh, IO device is being uh, 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 it is being recognized by a unique address, right? So this particular address, what we call it as a, uh, this address, we are having the address decoder. When it uh, it is going to receive the address information, so this decoder will try to decode the address information and that decoded address will be used to enable the respective IO device. Right, so the IO device then uh, it will try to respond to the request to place by the processor. So that is the role played by the address decoder. Okay, so next, right, address decoder. So device to recognize its address. So then the data register holds the data that is being tra transferred to or from the processor. Okay. So here um, the data register, as I have told. So what, whenever the data, uh, whenever the data is being uh, transferred from the processor, here we are having the processor and the memory. Okay, so all are said to be interconnected. So when the processor sends the uh, data information, so that is carried over the data lines to the output devices, and this data register holds the data that is coming from the other units. That is the role played by the data the registers via it tries to receive the data got through the data lines. And next we are having the status register. The status register contains the information relevant to the operation of the I.O. device. When to enable the, the device and when to disable the device. So that next we are going to study the significance of and the use of the status register. So the status register contains the information relevant to the I.O. operation. Okay. So data on the status registers are connected to the data bus and have the unique address. So IO interface circuit coordinates the IO transfer. So this IO interface is uh, um, present uh, between the IO device and that of the bus. Right. So the, uh, now in order to understand the rate of transfer or to and from from the IO devices is slower than the speed of the processor. So now we have to concentrate on the next, how do we synchronize, how do we synchronize the flow of data between the IO device and that of the processor. Because we know that the rate of, of the speed at which the processor is operating is 
much faster compared to that of the input output devices. So there is a the uh, synchronization mechanism needs to be set between the processor and the I.O. device. Okay, so now right. So uh, rate of transfer to and from the I.O. devices is slower than the rate speed of the processor. Hence, we need a mechanism to synchronize the data transfers between the processor and the I.O. devices. So now we shall consider one program, I.O. operations involving a keyboard and a display device in a computer system. The four registers uh, which are shown in the figure are used in the process of data transfer. Okay. So, so this is the particular registers that is being used. Okay, so we are having the data in, data out, control and the status register. You can see the significance of data in and data out. So where do you think this data in and data out is present? So this is our keyboard and this is our display device. So keyboard, within the keyboard we are having this register called as the buffer area to hold the data, the, uh, to hold the uh, information or the data that is keyed in by the user. Similarly, this is the buffer that is used to hold the output sent from the memory or the processor before it is displayed on the uh, output device, right? So apart from this data in, data out, the status register contains the SIN bit, SOUT bit, KIRQ, DIRQ, right? So what is the SIN bit? It is nothing but it is a flag which is associated with the keyboard, right? And there is another S out flag. So this flag is uh, associated with the display device. What is the significance of the S out, uh, S out uh, SIN flag? So when the user has pressed a key, so that value will be entered into character. When a user presses a character on a keyboard, and the data, whatever that is keyed in, will be stored in this data in. So when something uh, information is present here, so this SIN flag will be set to 1. Okay. So by looking at the value, when the SIN flag will be set to 1, the processor which will be monitoring the uh, position of this one, SIN flag, so it will sense that there is a data that has to be keyed that uh, there is a data present in the data in of the keyboard and the processor tries to read this data into the, its registers. So this is the way how the communication takes place between the processor and the keyboard, right? Okay, so here the status flag contains uh, the four flags called as the SIN flag, SOW flag, KIRQ. This is called as a keyboard interrupt request. Uh, display interrupt request. So now uh, we shall uh, study the concept of these two, usage of these two flags later when we study the concept of interrupts. So right now just look at the significance of the SIN flag and SOUT flag. What is SIN flag? It is trying to SIN. So SIN flag it is associated with the keyboard. So when the user has keyed in a value so this will be set to 1. Okay, by default it will be set to 0. So upon when the SIN flag will be set to 1, the processor will try to load the data from the SIN. It will try to move the data from the data in into its registers, into the registers of the processor. Right. So similarly, when the data in this way, the synchronization is said to be achieved between the keyboard and the processor. So similarly, with respect to the output device here, we are having the display device. So yes, out flag. So this will be set to zero. When the device is ready, when the processor places the content to be displayed, it will be set to the information from the processor registers will be put up into the data out of the display device. When once the display device is ready, so this flag, okay, it will be set to 0 and so when the device is ready, this will be set to 1. So this is the significance of SIN and SOUT flag which is used for synchronization activity between the processor and the I.O. devices. 
Okay. So here we are having the control signals which are control register which contains the keyboard enable uh, and uh, display enable. Okay. So these enables uh, enable uh, uh, this thing we shall look when we take up the uh, concept of interrupts. Right. Okay. So now moving further. So here is a program to illustrate how the synchronization is going to uh, be achieved. So now we shall consider a program. Okay, so this is the program that has been written, a program that reads one line from the keyboard, stores it in the memory buffer and echoes it back on the screen, right? So one line of text has been entered by the user, whatever that the user tries to type. So that same information, that line of text is stored in the memory buffer and that same thing appears, it is displayed on the screen. So this is the program and uh, practice this program. This is a program that will be uh, frequently asked. Right. So this is the program. Okay. So here uh, we are going to make use of the status register here. Okay. So let me explain this particular program in detail. So first, can you identify this one now? Move hash line comma or not. So what is this hash line? So comma or not. Now we are going to initialize the memory. Okay. So because character by character, uh, we have to store it in memory and then we have to display. So now we are going to initialize the memory where uh, we have previously used. So move. The address of this line where a character that you have, we have to type we, has to be stored. So address of this line hash line will be loaded into the register or not. So test bit it is an instruction. It is a uh, instruction which is going to test the hash zero comma status. What, what do you mean by the hash zero? Okay. So it is nothing but this position is said to be zero. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So what is the position of the SYN flag? It is 0. So of which register it is? Status register. So therefore, we have to uh, test your test bit. What does it do? You have to mention the position of which uh, position of the status register has to be tested. So has 0. For that uh, position of SYN flag is being tested. So therefore, we are testing the SYN flag here. Okay, so if this particular sin flag, if this particular sin flag, uh, if it is uh, not set to 1, so then it enters into a loop, right? So therefore, branch if it is 0 to wait k, that means we, it is going to depend, if this condition is being met, uh, that means if the sin flag is not uh, set, okay, that means sin flag is 0, so then it is going to branch to the target address. So that is weight of k, that is weight keyboard function, right? Wait for the keyboard character to be entered. Else what we have to do? Move. Whatever the if, uh, if it is not equal to 0, then the sin flag will be set to 1. So what is the meaning that if the sin flag is set to 1, that means a user has typed some character and whatever, for example, if we have typed the letter A, so that will be stored here in the data in, right? Data in buffer associated with the keyboard. The content from the data in will be uh, moved into the register R1, okay? So now we have read a single character. So now this read function, so this is a read function. So this entire thing is a read function, okay? So we have read a character. So next, whatever you have read, it has to be echoed on, it has to be stored and then echoed onto the screen, right? So now in order to display, there is a, now identify what is the position of the S out. S out is the 1. So in the status register, what is its position? 1. So therefore, we have to test with hash 1 comma status. What is this hash 1? It is nothing but the position of the status flag where the assault flag is said to be there. So if it is equal to 1, that means the device is ready. If it is equal to 0, the device is not yet ready. So wait for the display to become ready. So then it is, if the branch is equal to 0, then wait, wait D. So it goes back, that is, it is more, uh, uh, it is shows back, it uh, branches back to the target address. 
So then in case if this condition is there, uh, if the sound flag is equal to 1, then the data display device is said to be ready. In that case, whatever the character that was read, it is stored in R1, the contents from R1 will be moved into the buffer that is associated with the output device. So data out, uh, this thing, buffer which is associated with the display device, okay. So this particular, uh, so this is the, sends the character to the display, right. So now move, what we are going to move, move this particular R1, okay. R1 comma R0. So into the and uh, here store the character and advance the pointer. So from the uh, what we are trying to do here, uh, sends the character to the display as well as what we are trying to do now, store it, store the character and we have to increment what now R0. What is R0? It is this particular thing. We have to store this particular R0 and then we have to update it to point to the next location because this here is the memory location where we are trying to store the characters and advance the pointer. Here every character whatever we read it will be stored and finally when we press enter the whole line of text will be displayed. Right. So now so store the character and advance the pointer. So this is, can you identify this which addressing mode? It is the auto increment addressing mode. Okay. So then what we are going to do here, we are going to compare whether the key that is hash dollar uh, zero D. Okay. So hash dollar zero D, it is nothing but carriage return. If we have pressed enter key, that is the uh, end of the line. So compare whether the key pressed in is the carriage return. So if so, okay, what we have to do, if so, uh, this particular compare the key pressed in with that of the key pressed, if, with that of the R1, check if carriage return. If not, if branch is not equal to zero, Go back here. If you have not pressed, uh, okay, so still there are characters to be read. So it will be read and again read, store, uh, read and write cycle will be repeated. Okay, so then what happens? Call the process, call a subroutine to process the input line. Right? So this is a program to illustrate the usage of uh, a SYN flag, how the SYN flag uh, is being tested using the test bit. And the SOR flag is being tested using what we call the uh, SOR flag is being tested here in the status. Here using the test bit has zero status, test bit hash one status. Right? So this is the explanation of the program. This slide describes the meaning of the program. This program reads the line of characters from the keyboard and stores it in a memory starting at location line. So then it calls a subroutine process to process the input line. So this is the just the overview of the program, the, what I have explained. So as each character is re uh, read, it is echoed back to the display. So register R0 is used as a uh, memory pointer. It is used as a pointer to the memory buffer. Okay, so and here in the whole slide, we have explained what is the content of R0, how it is uh, incremented using the auto increment mode. The contents of R0 are updated using the auto increment addressing mode so that successive characters can be stored. Here we are not assuming the byte addressability because we are storing the characters. So therefore, continuously the characters are assumed to be stored at an address of 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, uh, 3 and so on, right? So therefore, you are going to use the R0 for auto increment, okay? So each character is checked to see if it is the carriage written CR which has the um, ASCII code 0x, 0d, hexa. That is the reason why you are going to check with dollar zero d right so if it is a line fit character is sent move the cursor one line down on the display and subroutine process okay when we have read a complete line if you have pressed enter okay the ascii value of this enter is 0d whatever the key pressed in if it is matching with this so then the pointer is made the pointer is uh, line uh, we are going to point to the new line so that is the meaning of this 
So otherwise the program loops back and waits for another character to be keyed in. So this is called as a keyboard program. So this is called as a keyboard program. What you have to practice, right? So next, uh, moving further, uh, uh, accessing the I.O. devices. There are several different mechanisms of accessing the I.O. devices. So the fundamentally, the uh, interfacing, sorry, mechanisms that are used for interfacing the I.O. devices. So first uh, thing is the program control I.O. So interrupt I.O. direct memory access. So what is this program controlled I.O.? So in the previous case, what we have seen until now, so this entire process of accessing the I.O. device, so what we have learned till now, right from this particular thing, what did you see here? The processor will monitor the setting and unsetting of the SIN flag and the SO flag. So the processor will frequently look uh, whether the device, uh, uh, whether the user has keyed in any value or the display device is ready. So you know that the processor time is very, um, very important and processor time needs to be saved. So here what happens, what is the drawback in this particular method of uh, synchronizing is that you can clearly observe the processor frequently looks at the SIN flag and the S out flag. So this concept is called as a polling. That means the uh, processor frequently it tries to Okay, so here you can see the processor, uh, the processor frequently tries to poll at the device. That means it is uh, instead of executing the program, so or the instructions, the processor is looking at the keyboard for the, it is looking at the SIN flag for the data to be uh, read from the keyboard. And similarly, it is waiting for the output device to become ready. Right, so this is called as the program control I.O. So where the process and the concept is called as the polling. Right, so this is one of the method of interfacing uh, with the I.O. device. So here the mechanisms used for interfacing the I.O. device. One is called as a program control I.O., interrupt I.O., direct memory access. So I've explained what is the program controlled I.O. The processor repeatedly monitors the status flag to achieve the necessary synchronization. What is the status flag? I've mentioned. So here the SIN flag of the status uh, register and the SOUT flag of this uh, status register. SIN is associated with the keyboard and SOUT is associated with the display device, right? So therefore the processor frequently looks whether the SIN flag is set to 1 or 0 and the SOUT flag is set to 1 or 0 and uh, therefore we call it as the processor repeatedly monitors a status flag to achieve the necessary synchronization, right? So the, therefore, this process is called as the processor pulls the I.O. device, pulls the I.O. device and this concept is called as polling, right? So the, this, the drawback I told you, this method is said to be much of the processor time is said to be wasted in uh, for uh, polling, right? So by frequently looking at whether the SOUT flag is set or unset. So therefore, the in order to eliminate this drawback, so two other mechanisms were, was introduced for interfacing uh, the processor with the I.O. device and two other mechanisms used for synchronizing the data transfers between the processor and the memory. Okay, so the, uh, the first one was the interrupts. Okay. Synchronization is achieved here by having the I.O. device send a special signal over the bus whenever it is ready for the data uh, transfer operation. So in the previous case we have seen that the processor will wait for the device to become ready. Right? So this method is called as the program control interface, interfacing. Right. So in the second case what happens, interrupt mechanism, 
instead of uh, the proce uh, processor waiting for the I.O. device to save the processor time, the device, I.O. device itself will inform the processor when it is when it has become ready by sending a signal that uh, signal is called as the interrupt signal. So we achieve the pro uh, synchronization by having the I.O. device uh, send a special signal over the bus whenever it is ready for the data transfer operation. Okay, so this is called as the interrupts, right? Uh, next. The uh, second method of interfacing is called as the direct me memory access. So, which is used for high speed I.O. devices. It uh, large data transfers when it has to take place between the I.O. device and that of the memory without the intervention, a continuous involvement by the processor, large data uh, blocks to be transferred between the process, between the memory. Okay, so the processor is there the memory and the I.O. device, right? So, without, we are restricting the I.O. involvement of the processor, the exchange takes place directly between the memory and the I.O. device, that transfers are, um, that transfer mechanism can be achieved through direct memory access, I repeat. It is used for high speed I.O. devices which involves having the device uh, interface transfer data directly to or from the memory without continuous involvement by the processor. Right, so uh, next is the concept of interrupts. So in the next uh, session we will be continuing with the interrupts. So uh, come, having a brief uh, overview of the contents what we have discussed till now, okay. So, a uh, quick review of the contents of uh, what we have discussed until now. So, this particular, uh, we have started our discussion on how to access our memory device, how to access the I.O. devices and the mechanism of interconnection. So, this is the accessing the I.O. device. We have gone through how uh, the processor and memory can be interconnected via a single bus structure. Okay. And next we have seen how the, uh, um, how the uh, difference between the, there are two methods of accessing the I.O. device. One is the memory mapped I.O. and another one is the I.O. mapped I.O. Also we have seen uh, what is the I.O. mapped I.O. Uh, and the memory mapped I.O. If when both the address, when the I.O. devices and uh, this uh, uh, share the same address space, when the memory and the I.O. devices share the same address space, we call it as a memory mapped I.O. And if the address spaces are different, we call it as a I.O. Uh, device, I.O. mapped I.O. Right? Okay. So all these contents, uh, we have next gone through all the differences uh, between the memory mapped I.O. and the I.O. mapped I.O. And this block diagram, we have discussed the uh, how the I.O. interface is defined for an input device. How the uh, how what is the role played by each of these registers uh, in facilitating the data transfer? So we have gone through all these concepts, right? So the next we have seen the usage of the SYN flag, uh, the usage of a SOUT flag. How the uh, processor communicates with the input output devices. And uh, this mechanism of, for accessing the I.O. device is called as a program control I.O. And we have gone through the keyboard program. So this is known as a keyboard program for reading a line of text and echoing it back on the screen. Right? So, so these are the mechanisms that we, uh, we have gone through for uh, interfacing the I.O. devices. We have discussed the program control method. So in the next session, we will be taking up the interrupt I.O. under direct memory access.